Please close your eyes. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to come here and to teach out of your word, Lord Jesus. Please speak through me and help me to lead and guide these people, Lord Jesus. And thank you for gathering us here and working in each and everyone's life now. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, before I start, I would like to ask you guys a question. And please don't answer that question. Okay. So, are you here to find something that you've lost? Or are you here to find something that you never had? Okay. Because a lot of times in my life, I thought I had something. But if I really had it, I wouldn't have lost it. So maybe we were deceived the previous times. Okay, so the title of my message is The Fire Inside of You. Okay, Joka, just quickly switch off the lights. Okay, it's dark. We can see there's a, a fire. Okay, you can switch it on, Jock. <laughs> okay. So, a fire is something that's clearly visible. You know, something that you can see through something else. You can see a fire burning through the darkness. So, if you say there's a fire inside of you and no one can see it, then you should ask yourself the question, is there really a fire inside of me? Okay, so, let's speak about the fire. So, where is your fire? Where does it come from? And then we need to define a fire. Is it our motivation? Is it our passion? Is it the thing that we're living for? It should be something that drives us. It should be something that is the reason for us to wake up the next morning. You know, that should be our fire. But now we need to determine what is our fire and what is our passion and our motivation. And what is the main reason for us to get up in the mornings. And then, if you found out where your fire comes from, then you need to ask yourself that, I say I have this fire inside of me, which is a passion or a desire or whatever it may be, and ask yourself, is it burning? Can someone else see my fire? Can someone else see that there's something inside of me that pushes me towards a passion and a desire and achievements and improving myself? Mm. Or do they see me as just being me, not working towards something and not being filled with something else? Okay, so now the question is, you have a fire. Now you need to start a fire. Okay, so who or what is your fire lighter? Okay, so you know you, you get that you get blitz. Okay? And then you then you get the pick and pay one. You know it it is about the quality. And you need to choose a fire lighter in your life that will handle a bit of wind and resistance and difficult circumstances. 
You don't want the pick and pay fire lighters in your life. Okay, so where does it come from? Does it come from the world? Does it come from money? You know, money can be a fire lighter, it can burn. You know? I used to know a guy, he, he said that money is like a flare. In emergencies, you just throw it in the air. Okay? So, money is something that you can use to get yourself out of trouble or to better your circumstances and to offer you some sort of security. But it will never fulfill the purpose of being your true firelight and being there forever. Okay, so do we find our firelighters in people, you know, the people we have relationships with, the people um, we see as our family or our best friends or our parents. You know, it's, it's not nice losing those loved ones. But that can happen. And if or when that happens, we need to be able to stand strong, still being filled with a fire inside of you. Otherwise, we'll die out. Okay. Do we find our firelighters in houses, in cars, in technology? No, it's, it's nice having a lot of gadgets you know it's nice having a lot of things that will make your life easier we all want those type of things like washing machines and you know <laughs> smart TVs and, and HD cameras and and good cars and we like those things it makes our lives easier but without a fire inside of you that thing won't help you know, that thing will fade away, whatever it may be. Or do we find our, our fire in achievements, in the things that we accomplish, on the amount of degrees we can hang on the wall? Expensive wallpaper. <laughs> okay, but that thing or that achievement you might have won't fulfill you. It won't stand through wind, rain, storms, all those things. It won't stand through that. It will fade away and it will die out and you'll be left in the dark because your fire doesn't come from the right place. Then, if you find your fire in achievements, in things that you accomplish, can those things relate with fulfilling and glorifying God? You know, and, and working towards His purpose. If your achievements... And the things you, you find your fire in is leading people to God, helping other people to get saved, then you're on the right track. You know? Because then it means that your fire lighter comes from the right place. Okay. Please go to Hebrews. <laughs> 12 verse 29 <clears throat> Okay, Hebrews 12 verse 29 
Okay, it says here, for God is a consuming fire. Okay. So now, this question you can answer yes or no. Does the word consuming in that sense sounds like something that will die? Okay. So it means that God is the type of fire that will burn forever. And you would much rather have that fire burning inside of you than to be in that fire burning. Okay. Please go to Deuteronomy 4 verse 24. Going old. Okay, so it's actually the same thing, just written a couple of years before that one, with a bit more meat in the verse. Okay, okay so it says, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. So, first of all, God's a consuming fire, and then secondly, He's a Jealous God. He wants to be the fire burning inside of you. He doesn't want you to be filled with something from this world. Please go to Matthew 25 verse 46. Okay, so it says, and these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Okay, so if we choose the right fire inside of us, then we will end up in eternal life. And it's not that difficult when we are willing. No. We just need to come to a place where we can humble ourselves and surrender and ask God to be our fire lighter. No. We can ask God to be the one burning inside of us. And then, once that happens, you'll see a fire inside of you that won't be able to die. You know, a big fire. Because something God's, God creates can't be killed by any human. No, so if he's the one who started the fire inside of you, no one else can kill it. Okay, so now, God is the only fire lighter that will burn through 
rain, wind, hail, storms, tornadoes, and all those things is related to the storms that we are going through in our lives. You know, the difficult circumstances. Some circumstance might be compared to a rainy day. Other circumstances might be compared to uh, rain and then hail. And then, you know, now I'm going through a very tough time and this is, I'm going through a tornado now. But God will be the fire burning through all of that. Okay, so, <coughs> if you are going through a storm in your life, whether it might be now or in the past or in the future, while you are going through that storm and it feels to you like your fire is dying, then you need to reconsider who your firelighter really is. Because if, God, if God's your firelighter, your fire won't die. Okay, so, then, let's go to Malachi 3 verse 2. Okay. So, what we need to do in this life is to burn with His fire until the day that He comes. Okay, so it says here, But who can endure the day of His coming? And who can stand when He appears? For He is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's Soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. So, now the question is, is the fire inside of you <coughs> bigger than the fire that you are in? Okay. If that's true, it will refine you and it won't destroy you. And we all know what will happen if it's the other way around. And you know that each of us have the opportunity to choose which way we want it. We can choose <coughs> right now, yesterday, or tomorrow, we can continually choose who we want to live inside of us. And we just need to choose that we want to allow Jesus to live inside of us and to be our fire. Mm -hmm. um, we can complicate it with a lot of angles and circumstances, and, but you don't understand what I'm going through. If you allow Him to burn inside of you, there's a lot of things inside of you that shouldn't be there and that will burn away. Okay. So, there's also a cool quote I, I heard once. It says, The wind blows out the candle but fans 
the bonfire. Okay. So, if your fire is big enough, if your fire is from God and you have a lacquer big fire inside of you, the wind will make it bigger. Difficult circumstances will refine you and you will grow stronger in faith. But if your fire is too small and you don't have a lot of faith and the right person's not living inside of you and if you find your hope in the wrong places, the wind will destroy whatever's burning inside of you. Okay, so... It's not a difficult question and it's not a difficult thing. We need to choose to do the right thing. It's actually not a valid statement saying that I'm trying to do the right thing. You either do the right thing or you don't. You either choose to, for Jesus to be your fire lighter, or you choose to find your ignition in the world. Okay, so, and then I'm closing off with this. If you don't choose the right fire inside of you, you'll end up in the fire. Yo. <laughs> okay, please close your eyes. Father God, thank you for this wonderful day. I ask that you will be with each and every one of us and um, I ask that you will help us to choose you, Lord Jesus. And I ask you to create opportunities so that we can choose you, Lord Jesus. And thank you for drawing closer to us. And I just ask that you will be with our families and loved ones and protect them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.